Ah, the champ is here. The champ is here. And by the champ, I mean Hunter Renfro. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another video. Today's video, I'm going to react to some American football as a rugby player. I'm here in Alice Springs, Australia. I was born in New Zealand. I lived there until I was 19. I began university, but it was too much for me at that age. Um, and I had a, a shitload of debt. So I decided to leave the country, travelled across the Tasman, and uh, landed in Australia and Alice Springs, believe it or not, which is right in the centre. So that's a bit about me. Uh, now we're going to learn a bit about Hunter Renfro. Now Hunter Renfro, I'm looking up just for shits and giggles to be honest. Uh, it's not because a lot of other people have, have recommended him. In the last video I looked up Josh Jacobs because a lot of people had recommended him and because he's a running back. Today we're going to look at a wide receiver. At the same team, the Raiders, who have unfortunately played their final game in Oakland, or maybe that's fortunate. I actually don't know. Some Raiders fans, some hardcore Raiders fans will have to let me know down below in the comments section, and I'm sure you will. But with all that being said, I want to see Hunter Renfro because he stood out to me as being very, very unassuming in the combine. That's all I've seen of him. I have heard a couple of people say he's got very, very surprising, surprisingly good footwork. And so I'm looking at him and I'm thinking, I bet you've got amazing game speed and game awareness. You know, game speed as far as track speed might be a little bit slower in a 40 yard dash, might be a little bit slower around some cones, but you put him in a game, you get the ball in his hand and he's gonna really, really surprise you. That's what I assume I'm gonna see and that's what I hope I'm gonna see. So with that being said, let's get into it. Hunter Renfro. I wanna see his story. I wanna see how he got where he is. I wanna see, you know, uh, his his uh, journey to college, how he got picked up, all that stuff. Hopefully they're going to have a few specials on him. We saw some ESPN specials on uh, Josh Jacobs in the last video. So, I mean, I have no, I've never looked him up. Let's do it now. See what's on offer. <laughs> what? Hunter Renfro was mistaken for Derek Carr's son by security. You are fucking joking, aren't you? Are they taking the piss? Derek Carr's his age. I would have thought they'd say Hunter Renfro was older than Derek Carr, but anyways. Um, Alright, that'll be a good watch. Hunter Renfro, Clemson football highlight, so I went to Clemson. That's pretty good. Okay, shit. Okay, here we go. Now it's getting interesting. Two years ago, guys, way before the, the NFL, Hunter Renfro from walk on to hero. What is the true definition of an underdog? How about an undersized walk on receiver with tremendous dedication, courage, and dot 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 that sounds absolutely amazing I'm gonna watch that first definitely but I'm gonna do something that uh, I would would be absolutely disastrous if I didn't and that's turn on the screen recorder so now that we've done that now that we've turned up the sound the bloody washing machines on in the background it's really annoying me my sister put it on and it's about to finish right now no it's not okay guys let's get into this this is the perfect video man the perfect video I assume it's before it came out before his either final season or final two seasons. Maybe this is after his first season at Clemson. I better read the description. How about an undersized walk-on receiver with tremendous dedication, courage, and heart, who became a legend in one of the biggest moments in college football history? Hear the story of Clemson hero Hunter Renfro. Okay. Let's do that. Beach, better go uh, play some bachi on the beach. Some bachi? Up there. Some patonk. There you go. Don't miss short. This is what life's about, just hanging out with the people you love. Just being able to relax and kind of kind of reboot and rebuild for uh, the season coming up. It's 5-4, win by two, playing to seven. We're up, we get two here, we win. So let's go finish it. Now that I'm in college and I get to come back to a place like Myrtle Beach and the beach and go hang out with family here. It's just a great time and, and I enjoy it more than anything. This guy became a raider. What a legend. Let's go. Where are you buddy? There you are. I come from a fairly large family. We got three brothers and two sisters, so five siblings. So I'd always be competing with brothers and sisters growing up, and uh, that's just been a, a big part of my life. Three brothers, two sisters. 
you know, we have six kids, 10 years apart, and um, lived in a small house growing up, and we, we you know, can I help develop a, a close family. A hunter likes to compete. All of our children are very competitive. Um, and like I said, fortunately, you just never they gave up. Had someone around that they could be competitive with. Hunter always growing up wanted to be a receiver, and, uh, but we ran an uh, option offense at Sox State. That was eighty-five percent of our offense. And Hunter was, you know, we knew he was a gifted athlete. And, oh, uh, quarterback. playing and running back too. Just because he got the ball in his hands. What did they say, quarterback? He's got some pace there. See, game speed. That was eighty-five percent of our offense. And Hunter was game speed, baby. Option offense at Sox State. That was eighty-five percent of our offense. And Hunter was, you know, we knew he was a gifted athlete, and so we put him at quarterback, and, and he enjoyed it just because he got the ball in his hands. Yeah. I think just growing up, I just love football. I tell people it started in the backyard. Just being able to, to play receiver in the backyard, and I really enjoyed it. I just had to play quarterback because um, they usually put one of the best athletes on the team at quarterback to run the triple option. But I knew going forward that I always wanted to play uh, receiver in college. Imagine that, eh? Wanting to play receiver but having to go quarterback because they played the triple option. But I mean, whenever he kept the ball, whenever he kept the ball, it was dangerous, wasn't it? So this is high school. Soccer team. So I had six or seven high school coaches that would send me text messages all the time about Hunter Renfro at Soccer State. And so I really heard a lot of good things about him. Oh man, that gives me shivers. Really? Really? You got five or six coaches reaching out to you? Of course he's going to get connected with, with uh, Clemson then. That's awesome. You know, all these athletes need is just a few, a couple of people to just back them, you know? Just believe in them. Open up some doors for them. Give them a chance. See what they're made of. But he did have a breakout high school career, so I mean, he did it all on his own. 2012 Zoneman Trophy. Hunter Renfro. 2012. Where was I in 2012? I was here in Alice Springs. I was selling cars, believe it or not, and hating it. And then finally, whenever he came up to our football camp, to be honest, I was a little surprised uh, at his stature. Because uh, he was probably 5'11", 155 pounds. 155 pounds? I said he was less than 200 before. I didn't realize he was 155, but that is at the end of high school. So let's see what his weight's at now. Uh, it didn't look like the traditional wide receivers that we typically recruit. So we brought him in on an official visit uh, and laid it out like this is the opportunity at Clemson. You're, you're not ready to play at Clemson. Uh, he had some other smaller offers. And, uh, so he decided to back himself. Good shit, Renfro. It was a big decision. You can come and chase your dream. I think Look at that Clemson pour on your chest. How does that make you feel? I think you're good enough to play, but we're just going to throw you in the weight room for a year and, and let's just kind of see where you are uh, because he just he just had to get stronger and, uh, and that's exactly what he did. Nice. I really just wanted to be able to play with the best and that's something that brought me to Clemson is being able to uh, play with the best every week and just know I can play with them. And besides that, just a lot of prayer and Coach Winnie um, had a lot to do with it, just his godly leadership and just being able to kind of plug right in there and learn from some of the best uh, coaches, but also the best men in the nation. Bro, this guy's awesome, okay, one. Number two, I cannot wait to see this moment, one of the greatest moments in college football history. I may have actually seen it already. Um, and, and, and number three, I can't wait to see some jukes. I have a feeling, <laughs> I have a feeling his footwork's gonna be very, very surprising. And uh, maybe the footwork's involved in this greatest moment in college football history. But anyways, I am not gonna pause this one more time. We're going to watch the rest of this, and look at all their shoes. They're all orange. It looks quite cool. I remember my first practice, I probably dropped seven out of the 12 balls they threw to me. I just couldn't catch it. I was just nervous. I remember going, going off the practice field that day thinking, well, maybe this receiver thing is kind of harder than I thought. Maybe I should, should have uh, gone, to, gone to Charleston Southern and played quarterback. But I kind of settled down a little bit and just worked through scout team on my freshman year going against guys like Mackenzie Alexander, um, Robert Smith, TJ Green, J. Ron Curse, being able to go against them every day and, and compete. And, and they were the number one defense in the nation that year, so I knew if I could compete against them, then I could hold up against anybody. You know, Hunter's been a guy that really just embraced his role, whatever that role was. Uh, he did it uh, to the very best of his ability. 
So I think he, he earned the respect of our team uh, because of what he did on the scout team that first year. At the end of the day, uh, this is a program that the best players go play. And, and, and it doesn't matter if you're a walk-on, fifth-year walk-on, uh, or, or a true freshman. A fifth-year walk-on. Imagine that. And, and that's what you're seeing with Hunter. And, and listen, I got one more in my back pocket right here. It's going to Hunter Rico. Yeah! Oh, shit. Damn, I knew that was that. I knew what he was doing there. I knew he was pulling out that scholarship. Oh, man, that's so cool. And I just remember just feeling relieved because my parents had helped me out a lot and just knowing that... He's not tall, is he? And also the reassurance of my belonging and feeling like I can contribute to the team. Here we go. Watson takes a snap, rolls right, looks at the end zone. Hunter Rico caught it! Touchdown! 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 With a second left! A se Watson hits A second Rico. left? Who's that? Deshaun Watson. But I remember just lining up and, and knowing I had Tay outside of me and he was going to do his job and try to get a corner route. And uh, the guy ended up tackling him. Um, but coming off the position was getting behind uh, Tay. And That's it. Hitting me and then seeing him run down the field um, like he just hit a three pointer to win the game. The job that Renfro did, you know, and how he set the defender. With his release, with his Let me see this. I was, I was actually look before you discuss that, mate. I'm going to discuss it myself. Now, what do we call that? Do we call that a mesh or a screen when one guy goes behind the other? Let's have a look at this release. He actually nearly gets caught up on his um. But I remember just lining his up. other teammates, uh, the, the back of his leg. Lining up and, and knowing I had Tay outside of me and he was going to do his job and try to get a corner route. And you've just got to go underneath him, man. And uh, the guy ended up tackling him. Oh. Shit, man. Oi. And he was going to do his job and try to get a corner route. And If Renfro's defender didn't stumble because of Renfro's great footwork, then he may have covered this a little bit better. But Renfro got lucky. His defender stumbled. He managed to get outside. But that's some good footwork, man. Watch this. The, the guy ended up tackling him, um, but coming off patiently and just getting behind uh, Tay and Deshaun hitting me and then seeing him run down the field um, like he just hit a three-pointer to win the game. The job that Renfro did, you know, and how he set the defender, with his release, with his stem off the ball, and then his ability to stick a foot in the ground and open his hips and accelerate, that's what makes him special. Stick a foot in the I ground. I don't think there's anybody Love on our offense that Deshaun is more comfortable uh, throwing to in that situation than Hunter Renfro. And I saw him do a great job at the top of his break point. And whenever he got open, I, I felt very confident uh, that we completely Flex the ball to the... Reef. I remember just standing in about 30 minutes after the game, knowing we had won the national championship, just looking around, seeing all the... Fuck! That was a national championship game? game? And just knowing how blessed uh, we were as a team, and me individually, to have that moment. Just a sad Maybe I have seen this. ...moment more than anything to me that that team, which Hunter was a part of, accomplished something they'd set out and worked so hard for. Hunter Info, that's... A teammate you always, you know, want to be around, guy you want to be around. Don't he don't say much. He's just a quiet, humble spirit. Yeah, he's just a guy that got a ball. But the whole family knows that. And people I think people like like to think there's some superstar. And he is, he's a crazy good athlete, but he's just a guy. <laughs> and he realizes that. He'd be my friend, I tell you. It's gonna end one day. And um, I think the most important thing to Hunter is he loves playing ball and he'd love to be able to do that, but just some family. We had a real close family. We enjoy each other, and, and, and we've got Christ at the center of our lives, and, and that's what's important to us. I think he's a, a, a guy that's just, just going to continue to grind over the next you know, two seasons, uh, grow physically, and as he does, again, his his natural assets and strengths that he has are just going to shine even brighter. 
I mean, we're already on to next year. I think it's something that I can appreciate 20 years down the road. But for the next two years, I've got to be locked in on, on what we have to do to go win another one. Tell you what, man, he's got all the right answers. Very, very impressed with old Hunter Renfro. And that took us up to the end of 2017. No? Possibly the end of 2016. When did Clemson Nash... Um... Fuck. They won it last year too? Okay. How many times has Clemson won? Clemson has won three national champions in... Clemson has won three national championships in football, the most recent coming in 2018 with a victory over Alabama. Let me see which one they're referring to with old Renfro. 2016, so that must have been at the start of 2017 and this video came out in August 2017 prior to the start of the 2018 season. Something like that. Anyways, let's get back into a bit of Hunter Renfro. That was a little, that was actually a great look at his college football career or the first part of it. Oh, this is going to be great. Hunter Renfro explains his journey from walk-on to the NFL. The Silver and Black Show. Okay, well this is going to be me looking at Hunter Renfro's journey. In the next video we're going to look at his Clemson highlights. And in the video after that we're going to look at his Raiders highlights. And that's going to be Hunter Renfro done. But this is a 20 minute special. Sit back, relax, grab your popcorn, grab your coffee, let's go. Welcome to the Silver and Black Show. In this week's overview brought to you by Hawaiian Airlines, Jim and I get you ready for a matchup on the road against the Jets. I sit down with go-to receiver Hunter Renfro and head coach John Gruden joins Chris Townsend to break down the challenge of Jamal Adams. All that and more on the Silver and Black Show starting right now. Just win. Where is he? No, nah, like actual, where is he? Up there? Down here? Or down here? I don't know where he is. Oh, I thought that was Hunter Renfro. Derek Carr's first career start, September 7th, 2014. Okay. Three straight wins, the playoffs within reach, and the Raiders are back on the road to face the New York Jets. Welcome to the Silver and Black Show. I'm your host, Nicole Zalumis, alongside our two-time Super Bowl champion, Jim Plunkett. Jim, it's a good time to be a Raiders fan because they're churning out these games that are so much fun to watch. What have you seen over the last three weeks? Well, I think a lot of big plays have have occurred over these last three weeks. Good solid defense when they needed it. They were on the goal line uh, to stop a, a drive and, and maybe possibly tie up the score. Uh, right, I'm really sorry Mr. Plunkett, but I am going to have to skip. Uh, we want to see Hunter Renfro today. Le'Veon Bell. <clears throat> Jacobs. We looked at Jacobs. Who's this? John Gruden? Good old John Gruden. We love a bit of Gruden, don't we? When he wants better execution. I want better fucking execution! He gets better execution. Here we go. This is what we want. Size and steep, big and fast. Those are the most coveted attributes in today's NFL. For GM Mike Mayock, he wasn't as concerned with those when he drafted Hunter Renfro in the fifth round. What are you trying to say? Just come out and say it. He's small and slow, but he's actually not. Hunter's not going to outrun you or outjump you, but he will. Excuse me? He's not going to outrun you. Is that right, mate? Size and speed, big and fast. Those are the most coveted attributes in today's NFL. For GM Mike Mayock, he wasn't as concerned with those when he drafted Hunter Renfro in the fifth round. Hunter's not going to outrun you or outjump you, but he will outwork you and he will outthink you. And that's the exact player that's a fit for head coach John Gruden.
Hunter Renfro, one of my favorite stories in the NFL yeah. and the Silver and Black. We're so lucky to have you. I know we talked in the preseason. Let's start at the beginning of your story. Two national championships. <laughs> Is he feeling intimidated by this woman? <laughs> I think I might, actually, if it was me. Watson, you catch the game winner from Deshaun Watson. You're part of a was Deshaun class Watson. that is putting the league on notice. What is life like for you right now? It's been a whirlwind. Um, it's been a lot of fun. It's, it's, it's wild to me to think. Six years ago, I was paying for my school. Uh, I was a walk-on. Um, I was wearing number 35, which no receiver really wears 35. Um, I guess Freddie B wore 25. <laughs> but uh, um, just a lot of change, just a lot of excitement. For me, I've been blessed to be a part of a bunch of special people um, at Clemson, obviously, who um, helped mold me to who I am. And, and thankfully, I've been a group of good guys around here that's um, helped me tremendously. Yeah, it doesn't matter what number you're wearing as long as you're putting up numbers, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, that's true. Obviously, Clemson fans love you so much so that they're naming children after you. Is this true? Have you met babies named Hunter? Yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> after we won the national championship, um, back it was in January, and so... That following August, I guess between that time, a lot of uh, a lot of parents had kids, and so I met six or seven babies uh, that had either Renfro or Hunter. So wow, a lot of cool connections and um, definitely family atmosphere. That's incredible. Now let's go back to last week, the 27-yard catch, because I know my household, the kids were going nuts. Just yeah. take me through that play. The 27-yard catch. Are we going to see one of his highlights from this season? Let's do it, man. The the corner ball over the top. Yes. So yeah, the, the big, uh, the, the third down, I guess, conversion over the top. Uh, Derek did a great job. I'm really not a first progression on that play. I'm kind of third or fourth progression. So Derek did a good job of just being a good football player. And it popped open and hit me over the top. And, and I really was trying to catch and score. Um, and I, I tripped a little bit. Um, so Damn. Yeah, I was just able to catch. You recorded your first touchdown in Houston in front of Deshaun. That had to be So he's got a touchdown. Moment. Yeah, that was special. Um, Oh, cool. wow. Okay, so Deshaun Watson, the quarterback from Clemson, who threw that uh, national championship winning pass, now plays quarterback for the Texans, and he scored a touchdown against them. How fucking cool is that, guys? There's not much better. Look at this. Look at the step out of the tackle. You your first touchdown in Houston in front of Deshaun. That had to be such a special moment. Yeah, that was special. Um, Quick slant, was cool. it breaks was, a tackle, breaks another one, and he's away! A lot of Clemson guys there, um, and, and Coach Winnie always talks about God wink. Sometimes God just winks at you, and so um, there's a picture of me and him after the game uh, kind of hugging, and it was fourth down and 13 to go. Um, and then you add his passing stats, his rushing stats, and my receiving stats from that game, and they add up to 413 yards. And so just little things like that, um, It's just it was just a special time for me obviously, and uh, to be able to get that touchdown in front of him and all the other Clemson guys on the team is pretty cool. And then to come back here, Raider Nation, pick up your first touchdown, an important one, what was that like? Yeah, it was, uh, it was a big one. Um, it was, it was... Uh, so he scored one at home. Oh, I like that. It was cool for me because... Um, oh, through the legs! Uh, <laughs> Catching doesn't really matter. Um, we needed it to go win the game, and that's what's important to me, is just be able to go make plays. Yeah, Renfro! So that was exciting. As we sit here week 12, was there a specific week or a game where the light switch just turned on for you? Um, I think uh, I think the Chicago game. Uh, I had maybe four or five targets I didn't catch. Um, and it was right before the bye week. And I knew I was able to go home that next week. And, and I remember being on the sideline of that game and being like, Nice oh, footwork, bro. If I'm going to do bad, I might as well do bad going my hardest, playing my best. Um, and so that was kind of the moment. I had so much failure during that game, I felt like that I was like, all right, forget all this. I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to do it as hard as I can. I'm not going to be scared of anything. And uh, when it clicked for me in that game, um, I felt like Green Bay, I was able to kind of get some things going, even though I didn't have a big statistically good game. Um, but just be able to learn some things and not play. Oh, some my God, he did well to keep that. A special relationship that you have with Derek Carr, because we really saw that on Hard Knocks. You guys carpool to the games, right? Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Um, it, it was funny. Uh, we, it was the second game of the year. What better way to make sure you get into the nucleus of the team, make sure you're you know, appreciated and, and, and looked at by the quarterback when you're the third or fourth option? You get a carpool with the quarterback. Uh, we're going to play in Kansas City at home, and we drive by the security guy. And I'm in the front passenger seat, and he's in the front seat. And uh, Derek kind of says, hey, and waves him through, and he 
looks in the window and says, hey, you got your son with you today. <laughs> and I look at him and I'm like, do I, do I look that young? Like, am I old or am I young? <laughs> like five years younger than him and he's, and yeah. so we have a good time laughing about that. Now we're Fuck you know. on Coach Gruden and what it's been like having a coach with you know such a great reputation usher you into the league. Yeah, just his football knowledge. Um, I think where he separates himself is two things really. His football knowledge is second to none. It's unbelievable. Just the amount of film he watches, and two, how much he cares for his players and how much he cares about winning. Um, I mean, nobody gets more excited after a game than he does. And, and it's not because he's like, oh, look at me. That excitement. And that passion would be absolutely infectious. But I wouldn't like to see the bad side of it when you have a big loss. Although it's just part of it, isn't it? The highs and the lows of NFL football. It's, he's so happy for his team and so happy for the guys. You were born in 1995? Yep. So who did you grow up watching? Who were the NFL stars that you modeled your game So on? I'm a big college fan. I love college football. Um, and so I was always in the backyard playing football rather than watching it. But um, me and my dad did love watching watching Peyton Manning play in those teams, Indianapolis Colts with uh, Reggie Wayne, Marvin Harrison, um, and, and those guys. And so we always liked them. And then growing up for me, um, getting into middle school, high school, watching Sammy Watkins, DeAndre Hopkins, um, being able to play against those guys this year has been unbelievable to me. Um, and, and so that's who I grew up loving and watching. Well, and I'm sure admiring the Manning family, your family has a lot of similarities because yeah. it's a football family. Yeah. Your dad is a coach, you have several siblings. What was your household like in your upbringing? So we um, we have a bunch of good stories. I, I like to credit my mom for uh, for teaching me how to play receiver because she was so for erratic and just throwing the ball everywhere. And she was. I was to dive and catch That's it. adorable. She's like the best athlete in the world. Oh, come but on. My, but my dad. Come on, give her some credit. She's out there with you. <laughs> yeah, she's a good mom. Uh, my dad, we, we did triple option offense, and that's kind of his background. And so he'd have us out in the – and he never forced football on us. It was always just having fun. Mm -hmm. um, and if I grew up and I never wanted to play football, he had no problem with it. But he would have us out there blocking the trees in the front yard and running the offense and just having fun with it. So I think just watching him and um, my love for him and just his love for the game kind of married up as well. What can Raider Nation expect from Hunter Renfro? Um, that's a good question. Uh, hopefully, Give it to him, bruh. Someone who just goes and tries to earn it every day. Um, hopefully I don't. We, we always have a saying at Clemson, don't, don't let last year's home runs count this year. Or last game's touchdowns count this year. And so just kind of start over and go earn it every day. Um, that's something that I, I appreciate when people just go earn it. They're not giving anything. They have to go earn it every single day. And so um, that's something I kind of just want to <laughs> Oh man. Car throwing back this way. How wide open can you be? That was sick. That was fantastic. Hunter Renfro, eh? Okay, so we've got. Honestly, it's the exact guy that I thought he'd be, which is great because uh, that means he's an absolute legend in my books. He's literally like 23 years old, played quarterback in high school, was a walk on at Clemson. Threw him in the weight room for the first year, which actually sounds like a lot of fun to me. And, uh, you know, he's, he's, um, he's got a mind for the game, and I reckon he'll probably be in the NFL for a long time to come. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if he stays at the Raiders. Now, who gets a carpool with the quarterback in your first rookie year? Now, it's those kind of things that will keep a guy around a team, I think. But I might be wrong. He may get traded. I don't think he's the kind of guy to get complacent and start looking for offers else, elsewhere though. I think, I think he'll most likely uh, stay at the Raiders for at least a few years. In fact, let's just see what his, um, was it a four year rookie deal, I assume. The 149th pick in the fifth round, the 17th of 28 wide receivers, one of three Clemson players taken by the Raiders, and the only offensive player drafted from the national championship team. So he won two national championships. Okay, so here we go, yep, 5'10", weighed 155 pounds. He took a red shirt in the first year, threw him in the weight room, put 10 kilos on, or like 20 something pounds. Went back to the coach and received a scholarship. So he put in the work and made it count. Well, he's got a 35 inch vertical jump. That's, that's nothing to be ashamed of, I've got to say. But, Hunter Renfro, uh, that was today's video. If you see this, man, imagine if Hunter Renfro actually saw this. He's the kind of guy I would 
absolutely love to meet up with, you know, in the off season and, and throw down. You know, throw some passes, throw some balls, practice some routes, uh, you know, run through some cones, possibly some punts, some punt returns, all sorts of shit, man. All sorts of shit. I'd absolutely love it. So Hunter Renfro, or anyone that does know Hunter Renfro, hit me up on Instagram. Let's organize something. All right, so that is enough of Hunter Renfro's story for today. In the next two videos, we're going to look at his highlights. Let's see some footwork, baby. That's all I can say. Have a great day, everyone. It is Saturday, the 21st of December. Christmas is in four days, so I want to say, uh, whenever you do see this video, Merry Christmas, and have a Happy New Year. Peace out, everybody.